Hello, everyone. My name is Marlena Melas, and I'm a second year clinical laboratory genetics and genomics fellow at Nessie Wine Children's Hospital. I would like to thank the committee of the American Cytogenomics Conference for giving me the opportunity to present this case with you today. I will talk about the prenatal diagnosis of an unusual mosaic balanced translocation between chromosomes two and three on homozygous state. Let's start by presenting the case. We're talking about the fetus of a 36 year old G3P1SAB1. She had three pregnancies, one delivery and one spontaneous abortion. The current gestational age at the time of testing was 19 weeks and four days. Indications of amniocentesis included cystic placenta and hyperomegaly. In October of 2020, we received the amnio amniotic fluid sample in the lab, and we performed an employed screen using Anavision, which gave normal female results. Prenatal chromosome analysis using the conventional karyotype technique gave abnormal female karyotype, and also prenatal microarray gave a normal microarray result. Subsequent parental testing gave a normal female karyotype for the mother and abnormal male karyotype for the father. An employee face screen using an vision was performed. In particular, interface fluorescence in situ hybridization was performed on uncultured amni amniocytes using the syndromer probes for the X and Y chromosomes and chromosome 18 and local specific probes for chromosomes 13 and 21. As we see here from these images, two signals were present with the X chromosome probe in 100%, consistent with a female chromosome complement. Two signals were present for the probes to chromosomes 13, 96%, 18, 100%, and 21, 100%. Non-numerical chromosome abnormalities were detected for the chromosome studied in this apparently female fetus. We then performed prenatal chromosome analysis using the amniotic fluid. In particular, we examined 23 colonies from this amnio and we noticed a rather complex karyotype. But let's focus more closely on these chromosome results. Results of the chromosome study from this amniocyte sample indicate a 46XX female karyotype mosaic for two cell populations with related structural abnormalities. In particular, in 14 out of 23 colonies, a heterozygous apparently balanced translocation between chromosomes 2 and 3 was observed, and in 9 out of 23 colonies, the identical translocation was observed in the homozygous state or else we have two copies of this balanced phenomenon with no structurally normal chromosome two or three. Both abnormal cell populations were observed in multiple independent cultures. Cells with a structurally normal chromosome complement were not observed in this study. While abnormal, the overall contribution of this complex karyotype to the clinical presentation of the fetus is still unclear as the structural changes observed appear balanced at karyotype resolution. An apparently balanced rearrangement does not generally increase or decrease the amount of chromosome material, although there is a risk that an important gene locus may be damaged at the site of breakage. The mechanism generating homozygous translocation cell population and complete loss of structurally normal homologs is still unclear. Through our preliminary studies, we noticed though that the frequency of the cells with the two copies of balanced translocation appears to decline over time in culture, suggesting growth disadvantage compared to the heterozygous state. Microarray analysis using a whole genome oligonucleotide array detected no abnormalities in the DNA extracted from the cultured amniocytes. No copy number gain or loss was observed for the loci tested, either any regions of homozygosity. In addition, genomic DNA was isolated from the submitted maternal sample to assess for maternal cell contamination in the fetal specimen, and less than 5% of maternal cell contamination was detected. 
Regarding the maternal chromosome analysis, these cells had a model number of 46 chromosomes, including two X chromosomes. No consistent structural or numerical abnormalities were detected at the resolution of this study. These results are consistent with the karyotype of a 46XX female with an apparently normal binding pattern. Of note, we noticed that the mother carries an inversion. The presenting inversion of chromosome 9 is commonly seen in normal humans, and its frequency is estimated to be from 1 to 3% in the general population. Regarding the paternal chromosome analysis, these cells had a model number of 46 chromosomes, including the X and Y chromosome. Each cell had apparently balanced reciprocal translocation between chromosomes two and three, with breakpoints estimated to be at bands 2P251 and 3Q12. The breakpoints are consistent with the translocation observed in the fetal chromosome study performed on immunocytes from this individual. No other structural or numerical abnormalities were detected at the resolution of this study. Male translocation carriers can exhibit reproductive issues such as reduced fertility and recurrent pregnancy loss in partners. This diagram here uh, shows some of chromosome rearrangements that can be passed on in pregnancy and the possible outcomes in the offspring. The offspring may inherit entirely normal chromosomes. The offspring may also inherit the same balanced translocation as the parent. In most cases, the child will not have any health problems as a result of the translocation. But the offspring can also inherit the unbalanced translocation. If an unbalanced chromosome pattern is found, this could lead to a miscarriage or to the birth of a baby with certain health conditions. In these situations, a couple may consider whether to continue with the pregnancy or not. Uh, some points to remember here, a carrier of a balanced translocation can have totally healthy children, and it is also important that other family members are told about the translocation. Children who could carry the translocation should be informed about it through genetic counseling when time is appropriate before they plan to have children of their own. Chromosome translocations and inversions are present in about 0.6 to 1% of individuals. Although the majority of them are inherited and the familial transmission across generation is well reported, reports of homozygosity are relatively rare, with most data in the form of individual case report. A systematic review of all published cases was performed with particular attention to origin, ascertainment, and phenotype of the reported homozygosity. A total of 10 cases of Robertsonian translocation, six reciprocal translocation, and 90 cases of inversion homozygosity were identified. Six reports of homozygosity for reciprocal translocation were identified involving five different translocations. In each instance, a consanguinous parental relationship existed, with each parent being heterozygous for the translocation. Furthermore, with the exception of two siblings, no cases involved the same translocation. In all cases, ascertainment was followed cytogenetic investigations prompted by an abnormality in prenatal studies or in the postnatal proband. The effect of reciprocal translocation homozygosity on phenotype varies, with most abnormalities a direct outcome specific to the rearrangement. For reciprocal translocations, homozygosity arises in individuals born to related parents from a family who harbor a unique familial translocation. In summary, in our study, diagnostic genetic amniocentesis was performed at 19 weeks and four days for the pregnancy of the 36-year-old female patient after routine ultrasound showed a cystic placenta and hyperomegaly. Chromosome analysis of the amniotic sample indicating an unusual 46XX female karyotype. Parental chromosome analysis revealed that this chromosomal abnormality was paternally inherited with the father to be heterozygous of this balanced translocation between chromosomes two and three. The couple, based on these prenatal diagnosis results, decided to undergo elective termination of pregnancy. Of note, for reciprocal translocations, homozygosity is very rare and usually arises in individuals born to related parents in the case of consanguinity.
With this, I would like to end my presentation and thank all my colleagues at Nationwide Singles Hospital for their contributions and all of you for your attention. Thank you.